Hello, this is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church, Louisville, Kentucky, at our SSC Live TV studios with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining with me this entire week. We've been looking at freedom. God wants us to have dominion and not to be controlled by anything. God wants us to have mastery in life. That's a good word, mastery in life. And we've been looking at that word free and uh, that word free means this. It means to face your bondage. We talked about that, uh, to relinquish control to God. We spent two days talking about what it means to relinquish control to God. E, to examine the roots of your bondage. That what you see on the surface in terms of behavior is the consequence of some underlying issues that sometimes we're totally unaware of, uh, a belief system. So behavior is what we see, belief is what we don't always see. Change your belief, you change your behavior. And the roots of your bondage, E, embrace spiritual maturity. It's time to grow up. Embrace spiritual maturity. Ephesians chapter four, verses 22 through 24 s says this, but that's, that's no life for you. You learn Christ. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to him, been well instructed in the truth precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. In other words, some of the things you used to do, some of the behavior you used to have, some of the bondages you have to have, it's got to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it and then take on the entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God ac accurately reproduces his character in you. So God in you, coming out of you, reproducing a new you, a new you. That's what it means to be mature. And God wants you to embrace spiritual maturity. Um, when you have a, a, a child, uh, when the child grows physically, what happens? The child grows out of clothes. They can't wear the same clothes anymore because they're growing. And the same things happens when you grow spiritually. When you grow spiritually, just like a child grows out of certain clothing, you grow out of certain habits. You grow out of certain ways of thinking. You get a new perspective. It's maturity. God wants us to be mature. Now, what is the sign that I am spiritually immature? Well, spiritually immature people tend to be emotion driven. They function on their emotions. They're not rational. They're not functioning by faith. But the more you grow in your faith, you're not driven by your emotions and your feelings because your feelings can deceive you. It's what's called emotional reasoning, reasoning with your emotions. So because I feel a certain way, that's that's the way it must be. Well, that's not necessarily the case. That's your emotions playing with you and the devil can mess with your emotions. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11 says this. When I was a child, my speech, my speech, feelings, feelings and thinking were all those of a child. Now that I am adult, I have no more use for childish ways. Just like a child grows out of clothing, when you mature, you grow out of certain emotional reasoning. And then here's another sign of immaturity. Immature people whine a lot. They whine. Whiners are not winners. If you're always whining about this and whining about this, and when you look at your burdens and you're always looking at your burdens, but you don't look at your blessings, that's a sign of Immaturity. God wants us to grow towards maturity. Immature people are also high maintenance people. They demand a whole lot of attention. And if you don't get a lot of attention, if somebody is not always praising you, if somebody's not always celebrating you, then you fall apart. It's time to grow out of that. Just like a child grows out of certain clothing, you've gotten grown out of a need for people to affirm you and to like you. You do not have to be the center of attention. You're not a high maintenance person anymore because you are maturing. Immature people turn small issues into big problems. Don't get so discombobulated over small things. You only have so much emotional energy anyway. So don't waste your emotional energy, the limited emotional energy that you have over things that really don't matter. Immature people are people that are self-centered. They always are thinking about themselves. What's in it for me? 
what's in it for me. But when you're mature, it doesn't have to be about you. You can celebrate someone else. You don't have to compete with other people. You're, you can celebrate somebody else's blessings. And God wants you to move towards maturity so that you won't be held in bondage. You're not jealous of other people. Here's another sign of, of immaturity. You get your feelings hurt real easy. You get your feelings hurt easily. Right now, it does. When you are maturing, it does not matter uh, you know, the silly things that people, that's their opinion. Who cares what they think? You're growing out of certain mindsets like a child grows out of certain clothing because they're growing physically and they can't wear at six what they were wearing at three. They grew out of it. And as a Christian, you shouldn't be wearing spiritually some attitudes and behaviors and a mindset that you that you had 10 years ago. You should be growing out of that as you move towards maturity and freedom towards bondage from bondage. Now, here's some signs of spiritual maturity, and that is that you're dependent on God. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I do not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus name. I am trusting God. God. Here's another sign. I'm staying connected to other believers. I'm not trying to be a lone raging Christian. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 says, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. You're around a man, other believers. You stay connected. Here's something else. You let things go. You let things go. Some things that you're holding on to, it's time to let it go. Let things go. When you're maturing, you got a grip on your emotions. You know the difference when you're maturing between what is important and what is unimportant. And some things are just not important and does not deserve our time, does not deserve our emotions. Amen. Because you are maturing. And then finally, when you are maturing, listen to me, you care for other people. You care for other people. You care. It's not always about you. Listen to me. God wants us to mature and to move towards maturity. And brothers and sisters, in order to be free and to have dominion and not let life have dominion on you, then God wants you to grow out of some things. God wants you to mature. And if you ask God to help you mature, you will mature. Listen, don't wait until you feel it before you act. Many people say, well, I don't feel it, so I don't act that way. Start acting it. Start acting it, saying by the power of God, I refuse to allow my emotions to get caught up in things that are unimportant. By the power of God, I'm going to let some things grow. I'm going to get out of some things. By the power of God, I don't have to be the center of attention. I don't have to be envious. I don't have to compete with other people. I don't have to be concerned with how people think about me. I am free from that. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Because when you are a child, you grow out of things. When you're a child, you just physically can't wear the shoes you used to wear, the dress you used to wear, the pants you used to wear, you grow out of it. And when you become a Christian, you grow out of some things. So let's review what the word free means again. Face your bondage. Face your bondage. This is what has me bound. Relinquish control to God. Examine the roots of your bondage. What are some underlying causes that I... Now, issues that I'm dealing with that I've never come to grips with. And then E, embrace spiritual maturity. Grow out of some things. And C, if you won't do these things, that the rest of your life will be the best of your life. You can't do anything about what happened yesterday. And God's not concerned about your yesterday. God's concerned about what God wants to do with you today and what God can do with you tomorrow. And since God's concerned about that, that's what you should be concerned about. Let the Lord set you free. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this week of powerful points to ponder and help us to ponder them, especially as the spring is coming, coming, and we're enjoying the spring. Help us to spring forth as new, new. Thank you for your grace and your goodness that you never give up on us. So don't let us give up on ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me again for another powerful point to ponder all week long. Tomorrow is the Lord's Day. It's Palm Sunday. Look, let's get prepared for Palm Sunday. and Next Sunday is Easter. 
the holiest of days on the Christian calendar. So you join us tomorrow. The pre-worship experience begins with Sister Crystal Goodner here at St. Stephen Church at nine o'clock. And then we'll come together at 9.30. I've got a word that I'd like to share with you that's going to hook us up to Palm Sunday. So you join us tomorrow. Look, if you don't have a church home, don't wait until tomorrow. Do it right now. Contact us, newstart at ssclive.org. We'd love to have you to become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church, regardless of where, the, where you are in the country. Thank you so much for being with me. In fact, the entire year, we've done perhaps almost 350 powerful points to ponder. And uh, I've enjoyed doing them. And I thank you for your responses to the powerful points to ponder, your willingness to share them with other people. Look, God loves you. So do I. God's got a great future for you. Tomorrow will get better. I don't care what's going on today. Things will get better. But until we meet again, until we come together in church tomorrow, look, during COVID-19, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane. And if you can, stay home. God bless you. I'll see you in church tomorrow.